books use data, shouldn't you too? And this is easy sports data, like the preschoolers use. EasySportsData.com I win here and I win there. Now what? Sports Betting Weekly! What a queen! Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. You should also check out SportsBettingLessons.com You'll learn some old tricks because sometimes how you bet is more important than who you bet. SportsBettingLessons.com Let's just do it. Let's meet this thing head on. And you were you were in it to win it. Talk about an education. Sports Betting Weekly. Wow, winning. Sports Betting Weekly. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Welcome to Sports Betting Weekly. We are sponsored by ChampionshipFootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. And if it is 8 o'clock Eastern, on Thursday, where you are, that you are watching some serious basketball and you are doing it live on the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Otherwise, you might be listening on the Belly Up Podcast Network. You might be watching at sportsbettingweeklylive.com. But either way, we're going to get you to cash some tickets. Now, we may be actually cashing tickets tonight on a few different things. And we may be doing it through a surrogate because Blackhawk West is nowhere to be found. <laughs> but, um, it looks like we're getting them to show up here. Let's see. Hey, um, John from GMF Sports Consultants. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two years since we've had a day like this. It's been two years, not to the day, but you know what I'm saying. Two years since we had tournament action that was all the play, all the teams were playing. Uh, Monday, there was a couple. Tuesday, Wednesday. And those are... You know, those first round games where the teams have buys, so there's not as many games. Yep. Today, it was set your alarm if you lived on the West Coast. Yeah, I mean, if you love basketball, especially college basketball, I, I mean, these next couple of days are a real treat. And like you were saying, um, you, you know, it's, it's kind of good they get these tournament games in before the actual tournament starts next week because uh, you got to get used to it a little bit because we weren't used to this all day action, you know, in the middle of the week like this. So, it's good to get a couple uh, uh, practice rounds under your belt before we get the real deal come next week, you know? Well, yeah, we are COVID out of shape for sports betting. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know? yeah. uh, but, um, all right, so, uh, yeah, no, whatever. Okay, so 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 here's here's where we're at. It, it's cra- It's been a crazy day. And we do the same thing every week. But there are there are Thursdays. Guys, that I come on the show, and I haven't made a bet yet, and I'll ask you what you have. At one point, I must have had 45 plays, and I was doing really small units on those early games because I wanted to make sure I had my bankroll. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when when I like a team, you know, I have a couple ways of of betting basketball. Uh, is one is I'll do uh, the risk and then the win. So I, if as long as they win the game, I break even. If they cover, I hit both bets. Um, then I have when I like a team, and I had two of them today. I had o- Oklahoma State and I had St. John's, where I thought the wrong team was favored. So now I've got to bet not only them, I got to bet them on the money line. Oh my God, it was hard to keep up. With my uh, with my plays, and I was working the whole time, but it's uh, I, I I had a tough morning because a lot of the teams that got me to the dance that have been covering for us the last three weeks, they didn't cover today, but one of them did, and that was the Oregon and over parlay hit again, and all of a sudden, as you know, if you're betting little units and you lose a lot, and you bet a couple of big units and you win. All of a sudden, you're right back, and and so I'm running through the house. There's nobody home but me, and I'm going. I'm a player. I'm a player. <laughs> so no, to say to say I missed it is uh, is an understatement. And I really, guys, I really didn't realize how much I did. Hey, Wes, you made it in. Yeah, I'm here. Great to be here. So, um, all right. So we we're going to do the same thing we do all the time, which is kind of find out what we got to to look at. Now I did have, uh, I did have Kansas, so that for me was really nice because I was stressing a little bit with the email not working and, and getting everything set up, and um, the next thing I know, they were up by like twenty, 
which is uh, when you're, I think they were given one or two for the first half. So that made it yeah. easy. But I'm officially sitting around waiting. There are six games, guys, that start. There's a game that just started. There's another one starts uh, – USC starts at the bottom of the hour. Then as soon as we get off the air, there are six. Then there are three, and then last at 10 o'clock our time uh, – 10 o'clock our time. No, seven, 8.30 our time, 11.30 Eastern. There's, there's six more. So there's still well over a dozen games left. So let's look at some live action. We're going to start with John from GMF Sports Consultants. If I was wanting to put some of that money that I just won – Back into the board, where would I look? Uh, well, right now, I, I'm not really exactly sure of the game because i would be kind of going back and forth. But I'm on the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. They were, they were down uh, 1-0. And this is another opportunity where if you played them pregame, I think they were minus 180, minus 190. And then now you can actually get them at plus odds um, if you take them to win the game. Um, so I'm, I'm going to jump on that. Uh, Toronto hasn't really been good lately, but I'm hoping that they pick it up here and hopefully get back in the win, win column here today. So they, they need a win bat. So I'm hoping well, they can score some goals. Yeah, I was too late. Oh, they, did they tie it up? They tied it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late. But you know what? Wes and I, we, we, we've spent the last two years batting teams the second time when they went down early, you know? Yep. Yep. Well, just kind of like what you said before, if, the, if there's a team that you like before the game, you know, if they go down early, why, why don't you like them then? You know, especially when you're getting some plus money. So, you know, that's kind of what I did. I sprinkled, they were in between the period. I didn't check them. They must've just started the second period again. Yeah. So, they, they yeah. Scored, they scored four minutes in, they scored already. So, oh, okay. <laughs> we'll look, we'll look for something else as we yeah. go. What about you, Blackhawk Wes? So I, I'm looking at Nashville and Carolina. This, this game is not a mismatch. I mean, this, this is not a three beat the other guy by three. Uh, as soon as that third goal was scored, I jumped on plus four, and then it very quickly adjusted. I mean, that was a lightning fast, you know, speedy Gonzalez type of fingers to get the four. But I jumped back on it at three and a half. Uh, this is almost identical to what the three of us jumped on last week when you accidentally bet Philly to win and then they won the game for us. So um, <laughs> yeah, remember I, I thought I was uh, what I was, I thought I was getting one and a half. Yeah. yeah I, I forgot what I was getting, but so, so I had, I had a nice one yesterday. Remember when we were on that Penn state game and I just, I forgot I did it. I said, you know what? Penn state's a better team. They just said one for me. And I, I got it, I think, with 360. Does that sound about right? It was like basically four to one. And they ended up coming back, and it was an easy W at the end, at, you know, getting on a money line. So those those are always nice. So, yeah, I um I hopped on a, at, at three and a half. Uh, so I got uh, – so that's my first bet. Now, that one, of course, we can't win. Uh, but the second period one we can, right? And there's there's been no goals scored in the second period. So that one and a half is is probably uh, either about to change to one or it's about to get a more favorable odd, maybe a plus 110. I would think if we get down to the seven, if we get down to the 16 minute mark, we're probably going to see some movement in that line. Um, Nashville's not really built to come from behind, but they're not a three nothing loss type of team. So I. Uh, I don't I don't know that I like that that second period in that game. I do like the second period in this Winnipeg Toronto game that John was talking about. And and I think that if you still want action on Toronto, the way to lay it is minus 0.5 regulation. But they got to do it in regulation. But that's an easier way to play the money line without paying all that juice. Yeah, the regulation versus overtime is a really big deal when one team takes the guy that's got all the equipment on and he kind of slides over to the side and takes a rest, and then they get six guys on five. Yeah, it's a big deal to not, you know, because if you've got it in regulation, you know, the last two, three minutes of a hockey game are going to give you some sweats, man. How many times could they hit the puck that far and miss the net by three inches? Or they, I saw one hit the post. He slid it the whole length of the ice and it hit the post. Well, and that's that's where that half point, that's why it's one and a half and not one. Because that half point is the empty net goal. And if there's more than a two-point uh, deficit, I don't even know that that goalie gets pulled. But I, I remember the exact game that, that, that you're talking about where he missed the net twice. He could have yeah. two empty net goals. Yeah, yeah. All right, so... Um... 
All right, so where I'm at right now, all the only action I have in my account currently is pending, and then that is a, a a hockey bet. That's pretty crazy because they might I might get a call from my bookie saying, "Are you sure that's you? That somebody <laughs> hacked your account because you had seventy seven hundred basketball bets today. And you just threw in a play on the Nashville Predators getting three and a half." <laughs> all right, so. Uh, let's do this. We're going to talk some golf. We got sloppy to this week as our interview E and we'll do a couple, three segments with him. Uh, I wanted to talk some golf. I wanted to talk a little bit about last weekend. Um, we had some pretty good highlights last weekend. Now my, my horse racing, I realized I was spoiled from the week before because I was sitting exact as, and I don't know if you guys saw how I was getting more aggravated. Every exacta that I hit, it was getting madder and madder because the way I bet an exacta gets me my money back, and it's great, and I might win a couple bucks. I don't want to read the racing form to win a couple bucks. I want to win a lot of bucks, you know. But uh, we had a pretty good weekend. Let's start with John. John, what do you remember the most of what that made you feel good last weekend? Because we had a lot of winners. Yeah, yeah, we did. I, I, I think probably the one that sticks out the most would be UNC, uh, where they just completely dominated that that game pretty much throughout and and you know i thought that was a gift if i recall i think we cashed several tickets on that unc game throughout the the first half of the game and i think we had a total mix in there too so that would be you know kind of a highlight that uh stuck out to me and then you know uh i don't want to give too many hints but i, I might also be uh doubling back on them later on today for anybody who's watching so <laughs> that's the beauty of it you know and, and again Remember what Sports Betting Weekly is. It's a show where guys that are just guys called up from all over the country and the world because Paulo, God bless his soul, was in Greece when he called once. And, and what happens is it's their opinions. But what we found after eight years is they're very, very good. And you'll see what I mean when we talk to Sloppy. He was one of the guys from the beginning as well. And, and what happens is they give out winners, but because we kind of tweaked it a little and we took the opinion and then we salted it with our betting style, we are, we're hitting three, we're hitting four, we're hitting seven bets in a game. It's insane. And you know what? It's really, I'll never, I always tell the story about baseball last year. It was a playoff game and Wes and I were going back and forth. And, every, and, and they kept getting a hit with a man on second. And he kept betting another half a run. And they kept getting a hit with a man on second. And he bet over a half a run. And he, and he kept doing it. And they got like six hits in a row. And they, they might have been the Dodgers. Don't quote me. Wes might know when I ask him. But it was just, it was amazing. One after another, after another, after another, after another. And, and in a situation like that, at the beginning of the game, you might have had the wrong team. You might have had the under. It doesn't matter. You win six or seven bets in, in a, on a game, even if you were wrong. A worst case scenario is you're going to be up a couple bucks. Do you remember who it was, Blackhawk West? I, I think it, I think it was because uh, it, it was Dodgers. Had, there were some hot bats in in those games, and there there was one game where there was like 15 runs on the board before the fifth inning or before the fourth inning, and uh, it was either Tampa or or the Dodgers, and or maybe both because I did it a few times. Yeah, it was, it was, fun. Well, it was well, What about you this past weekend? What, what's something that jumps out of you that you remember? Well, the, the biggest win this past weekend was, you know, I said it on the show last week. I really like an FCS football game this weekend. Uh, I had Jack, I had Jackson State. By the way, you teased that beautifully because you never let either John or I know about it until <laughs> – Saturday morning when we, when we well, needed to know about it. Well, I, I'll never hold out on, on you guys. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, I, I love Jackson State going into the game. They were a 10 and a half point dog. I, I played them first half. I played them in over points. I had them in, I had them with the 10 and a half and then the money line, which was, uh, it, it was great. I mean, that was just a thrill to watch. I got, uh, they finally opened up this FCS. Now, if you don't know, if you're watching the show, you don't know we have football. There's uh, college football is being played. I know it's kind of crazy, and and you're not really getting the coverage unless you can find the stream. And in most times, you actually can. It's really not that difficult uh, to find the games. But they had the first quarter line. So for me, when I hit Jackson State yesterday, I cashed five tickets on Jackson State. I don't even know where Jackson State is. 
it I believe it's in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, Johnny Cash sang a song about it. It's very possible, but I like them. I, I don't remember their nickname, but I was I was trying to find out some of these nicknames at the schools that I never heard of. But what I did is, you know, I really liked somebody. I forget who it was. It didn't even, oh, it was uh, to bet against South Florida. Now, South Florida, we'll talk about them in a little bit because they gave us a gift today. They were an early game, and they, they, they beat us. But because it was an early game, you know, there weren't a lot of eggs in the basket there. Uh, and, and if they had lost, they were done. But I think we're going to get a payback uh, on them tomorrow. I'm really excited. But I hooked up the Shockers, I think it was, with your um, – uh, money line, and all of a sudden, two teams was seven to one. Well, if you know three teams is six to one, you know two teams is seven to one is a pretty good hit. It was a nice hit for me, so uh, I, I'm kind of piggybacking my good memories on uh, your money line play. But you did, you teased it out. Anybody that listened to it that didn't get it, well, you know what? You got really look in the mirror, you got nobody to blame but yourself. All right, so let's talk about golf. Slappy's coming on because there are two golf tournaments. This week, but he said that one of them is a, a real important golf tournament. And John from GMF Sports Consultants, do you bet golf? I I don't. I I don't really follow it that much. You know, every once in a while, I'll pick it up, maybe for a Masters or, you know, we all remember the uh, Tiger Woods moment. You know, uh, last year or the year before that. But uh, I I don't follow it, so I don't bet it. Um, I occasionally play it. Uh, but I think I do more drinking on the golf course than actually playing golf itself. So, so I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. You know, I gave up golf, the money I spent on golf to become the money I spend on, on, on sports betting. But he says it's the players' championship, and I right away, even though I, I have bet honestly more Indy 500 races on Memorial Day weekend drunk in the desert than I have um, golf tournaments. But he said, yeah, it's considered the fifth major, Black Hawk West. Have you, do you ever bet golf? Yeah, I, I do. And, I I mean, this I, this is not football unit, basketball unit. I mean, these are not legit units. But I actually enjoy watching golf when there's nothing a little bit more contact sport-ish on TV. But but I like to play those daily fantasies with it. You, you pick, like, five or six guys, and based on where they finish – you get points for it and, you know, you throw five bucks at it and you got a chance to win, you know, a bigger dollar amount, but I'll, I'll play some futures uh, on those. I mean, it, it, you find some value, a couple bucks here and there, but um, I just don't know how to break it down the same way that I do hockey or football, or even at this point, these basketball games we're into. So I, I, I it, it's kind of like on any given Sunday. And and when we come back from break, we're going to talk to sloppy who is, is just a – he's a, as good a handicapper as the three of us are, and he is a, a golf guy. And I think what it is, Blackhawk West, is you got to watch. If you don't watch, you can't tell. Because he was saying – he was making comments that his eyeballs had seen. These weren't comments that you read. You know, if you read something about a guy, it's different than if you see the guy doing that. So he follows it, which, duh, is a pretty, it makes you a better handicapper if you're betting what you're watching. I mean – you know, but we used to watch bowling. God, hey, mom, I know you don't know, even. I don't think you, my mom's eighty something. I don't know if she has the internet, but but I'm telling you, mom, I remember watching the bowling, and we would watch the bowling. Sunday was big. They would bowling in the winter time. Bowling's on ABC, right? I mean, it's a pretty big deal. If I know you could bet on it back then, I would have had a lot more fun with my mom. <laughs> All right, so when we get back from break, we're going to talk some golf. You're listening to Sports Betting Weekly on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network and Belly Up Sports Podcast. It, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Be fearless at MMA Long Island and Seituha Karate. Located at 28 Cold Court in Ronkonkoma, MMA Long Island is the martial arts school for you if you want to learn combat-proven techniques, build confidence, discipline, and self-esteem while learning real martial arts to fight back against bullies, predators, and peer pressure. MMA Long Island offers group and private lessons for all ages and levels in traditional goju-ru karate, MMA, and self-defense. MMA Long Island is one of Long Island's most affordable martial arts schools. There are no promotion, belt, or membership fees, and family discounts are available. All classes are taught by 7th degree black belt Sensei John Benedict with over 30 years teaching experience. 
So whether you want to get in the ring or protect yourself and your family, MMA Long Island can help you reach your goals. Visit MMALongIsland.com. That's MMALongIsland.com. Or call or text 516-381-9660. That's 516-381-9660. Do current market conditions have you nervous? Our experienced team of financial professionals at Heritage Harbor Financial Associates understands that no two investors are alike. We all have different goals, needs, and appetites for risk. That's why the one-size-fits-all approach does not work, especially when planning for retirement. At Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, we analyze your unique investment style so that you can work toward your individual retirement goals on your terms. Heritage Harbor Financial Associates can help you take steps to reach your retirement goals by providing a wide array of financial products to fit your needs even for the risk adverse give us a call at 631-331-6599 to learn more or to set up an appointment with one of our financial professionals you can also find us on the web at hhfa.org or on facebook at facebook.com slash hhfa.org our number again is 631-331-6599 that's 631-331-6599 investments in stocks bonds and mutual funds and variable annuities are not fdic insured and are subject to fluctuation in value market risk, including loss of principal Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, offer securities through AXA Advisors, LLC, New York, New York, member FINRA, SIPC, annuity and insurance products offered through AXA Network, LLC. Edward Lehman has been a trusted insurance advisor for over 16 years with insurance solutions for auto, home, commercial, life, and retirement. He's located at 54 Sunnyside Boulevard, Suite H in Plainview. That's just 1,000 feet south of 495. Local agent, local advice. The time to think about insurance is before you need it. So do yourself a favor, and before you pay your next insurance bill, give Ed and his team a call, 516-935-3900, or visit him online at www.allstate.com forward slash EL. Edward H. Lehman Insurance is your trusted insurance advisor. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Sports Benning Weekly. You keep lying when you ought to be truthing. And you keep losing when you ought to not bet. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Sports Betting Weekly. I am Second Half Chaz. As always, we are joined. Well, not as always, because next week one of us is going to Costa Rica. But we have John from GMF Sports Consultants. We have Wes, uh, Black Hawk Wes from uh, 151 Sports Investing. Wow. And I and I tell people, I say, you know, not for nothing. If one of your guys is a sports consultant, one of you guys is a sports investor, you're getting some pretty darn good advice. And I personally, second half Chaz, just hopped on it because I saw that Toronto went down again two to one. So I hopped back on Toronto. I missed it the first time and I got it at plus 129. So what do you think? Nice, nice. I, I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm on them both too. I, I got the plus money earlier and on for the game. So hopefully that one comes through. However, the same time that the other team scored, Winnipeg scored, the Hurricane scored again, right? Uh, yeah, the Kane scored. I, I still think we're, I mean, we got a three and a half point cushion. We're looking for one goal. And and I don't even think that in this game, if, if it is a three point game, I don't think the goalie gets pulled. So I don't think that empty net garbage time mm-hmm. is going to hurt us. I, we're looking for one goal. There we go. All right. So let's talk about golf. So it's the players championship. It is considered the fifth master, which means that's important. And we talked with Sloppy about it. And and basically what I did is I tried to ask the questions. Last Saturday when we were on with the DCs, and, and it's funny because how many of hockey bets have I made with you two guys? I didn't really actually know, uh, Blackhawk, what's the definition of icing. I knew what it was, but I didn't know that whole three lines thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and so I've got a lot to learn. But but again, if I'm cashing tickets, you know, I really don't care about <laughs> I singing the rules. You tell me who to bet, I bet it. But um, we talked about golf and we broke golf down a little bit from that what we call the sports betting lessons dot com point of view. So let's see what sloppy has to say. You're one of the few guys who's a real passionate fan of your team, but still isn't afraid to bet against them. And some people won't do that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's an easier bet to make when you are constantly watching your own team, like mine being the Seahawks and the Mariners and those kind of guys. 
I watch them so much. I feel like I know more tendencies about those teams since I watch them so much. And you don't have to worry about it because even if you decide not to bet him, you won't get screwed from uh, going into the Hall of Fame like Pete Rose, right? <laughs> and I feel like this year, I mean, I couldn't stop betting against my Seahawks and it just kept paying off. And yep. the teasers kept paying off. <laughs> hey, if your team's going to have a bad year, you might as well have a couple bucks in the back Absolutely. to show for it. You know? <laughs> All right. But we don't talk a lot of golf on this show. And the reason is because I don't bet a lot of golf and if you don't bet it, you're not really going to talk about it, but there's a ton of sports bettors that play golf that watch golf. How big of, of golf is a betting in with sports books? I think, I think golf is a, a big side of the betting because of the odds you can get, especially if you're going to pick a winner. Yes. It's very hard to pick one out of a hundred to win the tournament, but yeah, I feel like the odds are great, especially with a bunch of different options that come with betting golf. And there are quite a few options. So I looked today and there's two tournaments this weekend, but we're going to focus on the players championship. And, and I, as soon as you said that name to me, I knew that I said, that seems like that's a big one. Right. And what yeah. did you tell me? They consider this the fifth major. There's technically four majors, but this is the fifth biggest tournament of the year. The players championship. No doubt about it. So what we, what we're looking at is, you can bet just the guy to win. Well, that makes sense. But you could bet it where he finishes, top five, top 10, top 20. You could uh, compete him in a matchup against one guy or against two other guys. Of course, there's a lot of ways to bet. What are the ones that you find most successful for you? I really enjoy the, the top fives, the top 10s, the top 20s, because your guy doesn't have to win, especially if early in the tournament someone gets out to a very big lead in round one your guy's still in it because you have a chance to sneak your way into the top 20 or the top 10 or the top five. Picking winners is tough, um, but I enjoy betting more. Let's see how high these guys can finish top 20, top 10, and some offer top 30 finishes as well. All right. So let's, let's in a traditional week where you're looking at top, just two bets, top 10, top 20, run us through how you handle it. What kind of units you use, what you're looking at, how many you'll play. So usually if I'm going top 10, top 20, the odds you're going to get are anywhere from like plus 110 to plus three, plus 400. So the odds are a lot smaller, but I'll start betting a little bit more. So for example, I'll take plus 110, I'll put a hundred bucks on that guy. If my odds start to increase a little bit, it'll be like a $50 unit type thing. And 25, if it gets increased by that, it's like we do a top five or something like that. So in other words, you're basically looking to win the same amount, but the risk is uh, alleviated by the odds. Exactly. However, if you're betting, if you do that same strategy on Super Bowl Sunday on the first player to score, all those other tickets are going to get thrown away. You can't win them all. And in that wager, you could cash every single one of them. Absolutely. And uh, thank you, Gronk, for paying this Super Bowl for me, by the way. But yeah, you can't, you could, we could win. Like for, if you take four or five top 10, top 20 bets, you could technically sweep the board and win them all. Yeah, you know, in hindsight, boy, that Gronk thing was a gift, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, they only had the record for the most touchdowns together. You would have think a couple ducats on that thing would have done. You didn't have that, did you, Wes? Well, I did, but I, I don't play the first-time score. I play the any-time score oh. because you – because you can hit them all. And God, I wish that I, I wish that I could have had Gronk. Uh, I wish it could have paid twice because he scored twice. But oh, yeah, I, they, they did have, they had uh, on mine, they had one or two or three. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The unfortunate thing for me is I had some Chiefs players and I live in Kansas City and uh, all of the touchdown scorers happen to be for the, for the bad guys around here. Yeah, when you don't score, but of course I had, remember, I had the, uh, the Super Bowl where that one touchdown for the Patriot guy was the first touchdown, was the last touchdown, and was the first Patriot touchdown. That was a good day. I, I didn't have a good day. Yeah, don't get me wrong. We have sold championshipfootballs.com. is just waiting now. We just got the art approved for the Alabama football, so they're going to ship next week, and they're really, really beautiful. Most teams put their logo when they won a national championship. When you've won 18 of them, you got to shake it up a bit. It would be like wearing the same tie every to every banquet, I guess. So they have a custom logo for every championship. 
and their uh, 2021 is, is pretty special. But the Tampa Bay balls are going to look great as well. So let's talk about golf. Uh, I'm going to start with Blackhawk West because I, I think we had talked about it a couple times last summer in, in terms of betting golf. Will you have any action this weekend? Well, I'm going to look into it for sure because Sloppy brings up a point. You know, if we're betting on top 25 finishers, I, you and I have talked about horses enough. I love betting the show. I just want to cash a ticket and I hope to catch some long odds. So that's kind of what that sounds like to me. I mean, if you can bet a top 10, a top 25, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to mess around with it and, uh, and, and see where it goes. I, I'm going to look up some finishes. I, I don't know enough about it to, to be making full unit bets. But uh, it, it might be like a little tax I, I, I pay when, when we cash in on this, this live well, action. Sure. Just so you know, when I woke up this morning and I looked at the handicapping sheet to start the day, again, it was an alarm clock day. The first game for me and John was 8 o'clock. It was 8 o'clock in the morning there was a game on. And honestly, I missed the game. I missed it. And I had to go live action in second half, and I would have lost the first half because I had the over, and they went overtime. I hit every bet. <laughs> you don't get overtimes very often when you need them, do you? Look, we got remember we got we got screwed on an overtime. We needed this weekend. I remember we needed an overtime. And the guy hit. <laughs> oh, it was uh, it was the Memphis game. No, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Houston, it was Houston Memphis with a guy. Yeah, hit the, he, he rolled it. The, the guy threw up a prayer oh. right. The hole. And uh, we were we needed the overtime for some over. For right, right. No, we win. We're cashing when we if we got overtime, we were cashing. We only needed like seven points, I think. Um, hey John, when was the last time you actually were sitting somewhere and watching golf on TV? Uh, that's a good question. I I can't really exactly name it to where you, I might watch some highlights, you know, if I hear of something spectacular that happened. But me personally, I, I haven't really sat down and, and actually watched it. You know, like I said, maybe the rare occasion, you know, Tiger Woods and, you know, maybe some rare masters and stuff like that. But it's it's been a while. I, I can't even quite remember. Once I said, I don't really follow it. I don't bet it. So haven't really been paying attention to anything like that. Let's go back and, uh, and hear what Sloppy had to say, because uh, I think uh, now we're going to ask him a little more uh, serious questions about who we like. All right, so Sloppy, you mentioned there are two tournaments, but the Players' Championship is called the fifth major. Who do you like? So this weekend, um, I'm putting some money. I'm going to go top 20 on two guys. We're going to go Patrick Cantley. Um, I'm going to take top 20. And then also Matthew Fitzpatrick, who's been playing great the last three or four tournaments. I'm going top 20 with him as well. I'm getting plus 200 on Fitzpatrick, and I think plus 110 on Cantley for top 20. And then I got a couple top 10 bets. I'm going to go John Rahm, who plays this course pretty well, at plus 175. And a little bit of a longer shot for top 10. I'm going to go with Cameron Smith. He's been playing well as, as, as late. And I think I'm going to go with him. He plays plus 500 for his top 10 finish. So those are going to be my top 10s, top 20s that I'm going to go with so far. All right, so let's look at those guys. Um, Ram is 12 to 1. Cantley's 15 to 1. Smith is 45 to 1. And, yes. and Fitzpatrick, 36 to 1. And these are winners. Yeah, those are your That's winners. That's to top. win it all. That would Correct. be to win it all. All right, so Why? So I just feel that these guys have been playing really well. And I think Cantley's played three times at this tournament and he's finished top 25 twice. So, and he's really crushing the ball of late and actually playing really well. So I think he could finish in the top 20. Um, Rom, I just think is just a, a good player. And I think he can finish in the top 10 anytime, any tournament. And this is one that I think he'll show well in. Fitzpatrick has been crushing it the last three or four tournaments. I think he has three or four top tens in the last week or last uh, four weeks right now. So those are kind of the reasons why I'm going to go with this guy, Cameron Smith, just a long shot. I like to throw a long shot in there every once in a while, just to kind of see, Hey, maybe he can have a good round and finish there in the T10. So. Yeah. Again, when you five to one, you don't have to win. You, know, yeah, you don't have to win. That's the best lot. part. You don't have to, yeah. You don't have to win a lot of those to make money, you know? And it, but, it's funny because when you start to bet these top twenties and top, top tens, you're, you're really relying on other golfers late in the tournament as well. So with everybody's tied at T11, you need one guy to drop a stroke. So all those T11s come into T10 
So now you got a top 10. So exactly. You find so, yourself rooting against guys later. <laughs> so, so if there's, if there's four guys that are at minus six mm -hmm. and then 10 guys at minus five and when it ends, those are considered top tens. Yes. Even yeah. though they were the 14th or 15th guy. Yeah. Even tie. Yep. Ties are in yep. any T10 T5 will win it. So Wes, you mentioned horse racing in the show bets. How many times did you have a horse that was ahead of you? You're hoping he would slow down. <laughs> and you can see the, the, the horse is slowing down, but your horse has got to catch him. That's I, so I, I, I'm, cheering, I'm cheering for the duck to fall off. Not get injured, not get injured, but just <laughs> fall off in a civilized, non-maiming fashion. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the problem is, but if you fall off a horse in the front of a race, that's a bad place to fall off a horse. But so, what do you think? Did you know any of those names of those guys, Sean? The, a couple of them sound familiar. Fitz, Fitzpatrick sounds familiar. Um, you, you know, these generally sound like like names that, that do kind of pop up in mind. I, I think there was maybe one or two I wasn't familiar. But I know Ram I, I was familiar with, too. Um, so, you know, the, the name rings bells. You know, obviously, we all watch Sports Center. So when they kind of, you know, go to the highlights of the day of, you know, Saturdays and Sundays when they're showing those golf highlights, you, you pick them up. You, you know, for me, it would probably be the more popular names, you know, Dustin Johnson and, you know, Spieths and McElroy's and, and all these kind of upper uh, echelon people that you kind of hear more, you, you know, more frequently um, if you're not following the sport. Um, but it seems like he's got a pretty good hold on it, so he knows who to bet on. Right, but if you're in the top ten of any sport, tennis golf then you're you're playing in the quarterfinals or you're playing in the semifinals or or you're playing on the last day you're playing in the last round the last what do they call groups the last groups yeah, so yeah, yeah you're gonna get a little more pub you know but let's let's look what he did so far first of all he's got four guys in the top 83 he's got three guys in the top 42 he's got two guys in the top 26 and Sloppy's bet on Fitzpatrick, he's tied for third with a minus four. He was four under par in the opening round. So the first guy, John Rahm, he's got him. He needs him in the top 10. He's currently 42nd, but he's even. And I want to say the uh, Sergio, you know that name, right? How long has he been playing golf? He's got to be getting old. But I'm pretty sure he was uh, the leader. He led the leaderboard minus seven. And he is, uh, he's 42nd. Cantley, the long shot, uh, no, Cantley's not the long shot. The long shot is, is Smith, but Cantley's 83rd plus two, two over. But Cantley, his long shot is tied for 26. Now, he's got him in the top 10, but he's minus one. And you know what? Anytime you're clustered around the top, like we talk about with guys falling, golf is really weird because, you know, in, in horse race, you can have a bad race, you can have a bad game. But in golf, you have a bad hole, and it's one of 72, but it's a lot more than one out of 72% of your round because you shot a nine, you know? All right, so what I'm looking at next is uh, what do you think? Any shot, John, you're going to be betting golf this summer? Uh, I would say slim to none, not unless there is something that absolutely pops up. You, you know, maybe if somebody told me some inside information by any chance, I might throw a couple of dollars on it. But yeah, I just, I just don't follow it enough. I, I, I'm not too familiar with the players and the courses and everything like that. So, uh, the play you would, you would follow, you would, you would tag along. What about you, Black Blackhawk West? I I'm interested. I, I'm for sure interested. And, and, you know, this summer we, you know, this past summer, we got a gift with sports at, at the end where we got the NHL playoffs and, and the NBA playoffs. But normally summer, you know, we're looking at dog days of summer. We got nothing but baseball. There's a stretch. I'm a big CFL guy. You, you know that. So, but, but, you know, this time of year that we're in right now, we have hockey, we have NBA, we have basketball here in a few weeks. We're going to have all of that happening at the same time uh, when baseball starts again. But during the summer, uh, sure, the CFL doesn't happen every day. So if it's baseball and golf, I, I'm definitely interested. And I'm going to go, I'm going to learn more about it. And uh, I, I like the show bet. So betting on a guy just to finish in the top 20, that's interesting to me. I just need to learn more. What about the uh, potential merger? between uh, the XFL and the uh, CFL? I, 
it would be great if it happened. Uh, but it the CFL is a different game. It would be interesting to see which rules they played by because the CFL is three downs and the, the point structure is a little bit different and they have the three minute warning and not the two minute warning and, and, and the motion with the wide receivers, they're allowed to move front to back, but not side to side. So it, it'll be very interesting to see if they merge and under which rules they play. And not every, not every NFL player finds success in the CFL. It, it really, it, it's not automatic uh, up there. It, it is, a, it is a different game in the way that it's played. Well, what about the fact that, the Canadian Football League's been around a, a while. I would think that, you know, almost becoming a minor league to them would have uh, benefits to both sides. I did not read about it. I just saw the headline. It it would have benefits, but I don't want to lose the fact that the NC2A football program is the minor leagues for the NFL. And it's one of the only sports where where. The, the collegiate level truly is the only filter into the league. The NBA, baseball, the NHL, they draft from all over the world. The NHL is drafting from Russian leagues and European leagues and all over the place. And, and you know, I, I like our system with, with the NFL. You come from college and you have to, you have, to have a certain level of education and, and, and testosterone running through your system. You got to be a sophomore to get drafted. So I, that system would be disruptive to me. And I like the idea that we watch college football and we know the guys by the time they start playing on Sunday. There's no doubt about it, All right? So when we get back from break, we're going to get the Sloppy's final thoughts. I actually heard from him, so we're going to update what he's looking at. But he's, a, he's in a pretty good spot because, again, he's got three in the top 40 and he's betting top 20s. It don't take a genius. To, and, and when you say tied for 42nd, I didn't look, but I saw a lot of tees. There are a lot of tees. So you could literally be go from 42nd to 17th in two strokes, you know? All right, you're listening to Sports Betting Weekly. You might be listening on the Belly Up Podcast Network. You might be watching at sportsbettingweeklylive.com. But if it is Thursday and you're watching on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, which I call the app worth its weight in Bitcoin, when you come back, we're going to see how our live plays are going. It is the Worldwide Sports. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. At championshipfootballs.com, they offer a 100% money-back guarantee on every single souvenir football that they sell. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. There's nothing worse than trying to find the right gift for somebody that already has everything. Whether that special present is for a New England Patriots fan or an Ohio State Buckeyes backer. Maybe Grams is a lifelong New York Giants supporter. Or your brother-in-law is a 12th man living in Seattle. Know a member of the Michigan State Alumni Association? Is there a better Father's Day gift for someone who's a Baltimore Ravens fan? Send them the coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Now, if your favorite pro team is the Buffalo Bills or those Minnesota to Vikings, well, they're sorry about that. Also, if you're a New Mexico State Aggies or Tulane Green Wave alumnus, not much they can do. After all, the name isn't nice effort. You had a pretty good season, footballs.com. The name is championshipfootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Hey, this is an important message. I'm second half Chaz from Sports Betting Weekly. Sports betting is supposed to be a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. If you're hurting yourself by gambling with money you don't have, check out our website for the Gambler's Anonymous phone number. When Vince Young scored on 4th and 5 in the 2006 Rose Bowl, two things happened. The Texas Longhorns won the NCAA title, and ChampionshipFootballs.com was born. From Texas to Alabama to Ohio State, and now for Super Bowl winners too. ChampionshipFootballs.com is the place for the coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Now, 10 years later, ChampionshipFootballs.com has the autographs too. See if any of these names remind you you of a special time in your football life. Michael Bennett, Lou Holtz, Joe Montana, Devin Smith, Jameis Winston, Rocky Blyer, Rocket Ishmael, Ara Parsegian, Mike Stonebreaker, Chris Zorich, Luther Bradley, Todd Light, Tony Rice, Lawrence Taylor, Dave Casper, Marcus Mariota, Rudy Rudiger, David Tyree. Enter the promo code RADIO and you'll instantly save $50 on any of the championshipfootballs.com autographed footballs. Championshipfootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed. 
is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Sports Benin Weekly. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Welcome back to Sports Betting Weekly. I am Second Half Chaz. We're joined by John from GMF Sports Consultants and Black Hawk West for 151 Sports Investing. And someone had mentioned the North Carolina game earlier. Was it John? Yeah, yeah, that was me. Yep. yep. Okay, so so they're down early. They're they're down early. So this is an instance where you can hop on them and, and probably get a better line. They they were minus uh minus three if you played, you know, pregame. Uh, I'm not really sure what the end game is now, but you might get a dis- you might get a discount on it right now if you jumped on it. Before we check, they're down eleven to three early. Yeah. Now, I I I know Georgia Tech's pretty good. Is was Virginia Tech good at all? Virginia Tech's pretty good. The fifteen and five record. Um, they're one of the you know top teams also in that uh, kind of ACC. Uh, you know, besides Virginia and uh, Florida State, I believe Virginia and Florida State was a one-two. So they're the three. So they they're right behind those two. So they're pretty good. I like UNC uh, UNC just because I think they started playing really well down the stretch. Um, they put up a hundred over a hundred points last night or the night. I think it was last night. Uh, they obviously beat Duke, you, you know, previously before. So I think this is an instance where this is a team that's starting to get hot at the right time. And they did. They had a they had a tough start to the beginning of the year, didn't they? Yeah, they they really did. A lot of teams in the ACC struggled. Obviously, we know Duke did. Uh, North Carolina was one of those teams that struggled. Even Florida State struggled a little bit. So a lot of those teams in the ACC kind of came out the gate a little bit slow. Other than Virginia, I think Virginia kind of remained steady because of their uh, sort of pace of play and the people that they kept on board with that team. Um, but yeah, a lot of teams started out slow, and now we kind of see teams picking up here a little bit. Yeah, for some reason, it's still showing as event not available, but I'm going to leave that page open and slide over to the hockey and see what we've got with the hockey. I think uh, we're kind of sitting where we were sitting, right? It's intermission for... Um, yeah, I think they were in between the periods. I think it was still 2-1 for Toronto. 4 to nothing else. So that's just so okay. good. Well, I, I will say with the hockey, another opportunity has is, is come up, and it's a game John liked earlier. Uh, Tampa is down 5-2 to two right now. I don't know. I, I'm not in front of the the numbers, but uh, a plus two and a half. I mean, that's for Tampa. Tampa is a team that can they can fire off a bunch of goals. There, there's no reason they should be down five to two right now. That's, that's um, minus one ninety one on my in my world. Is that worth it at minus one ninety one? Uh, not at minus one ninety one. Mm-hmm. Is it two? Is it plus two and a half? Yes, uh, uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> plus Uh-oh. one and a half is plus one eleven. Mm. I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't go there. Not it, it's not it's not worth the juice. Is there a is there a live regulation number? There's not always that number with the. See live regulation. They uh, have Tampa Bay plus a half plus two oh seven. No, yeah, that's yeah, that's. It, so here's what I'm gonna do. I am. They're, gonna they're do- scared of him. I am going to go up here. I'm going to put me a one of those tiny little bitty units, but I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do what I should. I should. I should. What was the team that I messed up? Oh, was it? Was it the Flyers? It was I, Philly, and they were yeah they Philly were, last week. They were, you know they had in the Super Bowl. They had the Philly special. Yep. My Philly special is when I bet a small unit on a team that's got no shot of winning the game, and I'm getting Tampa Bay right now. <laughs> 24 so there you right. go so what well, we more. got we already got unc kind of coming back a little yeah. bit they, they already came back a little bit so open it up here so maybe yep. something who knows yeah 13 to 10 now all right so uh we're going to be wrapping it up talking about tonight normally we'll, we'll talk about the weekend and we'll do that real quick at the end but there are six nine 15 more games today guys I'm going to start with uh, Wes, Blackhawk Wes. Anything tonight jumping out at you that I could hop on? You know, with, with these with these uh, college hoops games, I, I'm not on anything pregame. I, I'm really not. It, there's been so many opportunities within the game, uh, you know, just to jump on. I mean, I, I 
you can with this UNC where they're down and we get a discount. So I'm I'm just going to be looking at the card. Uh, the game that I like going into it, and I, I say that only because I I like the dog in this game. I'm looking at Montreal against Calgary. Montreal is a dog. They they've they've been playing really soft these these last couple games for whatever reason. Montreal and Toronto in the NHL have. Have, have kind of been getting bullied a little bit. But Montreal is a way better team than than Calgary. And and Calgary is a favorite. And I, I, I like Montreal to to win outright. And again, only because they're a dog is is why I'm looking at them pregame. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And it really does. It changes everything. And John mentioned it tonight with the two numbers that he threw out for uh, the Maple Leafs, you know. Uh, what about you tonight? There's those 15 basketball games, Sean, from GMF Sports Consultants. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, UNC, I'm going to keep an eye on this for in-game opportunities. And then also, I'm going to keep an eye on USC as well. I kind of been tailing them recently. So I'm going to keep an eye on that USC game and see, uh, just like how Wes was talking about. Uh, I mean, right now, it's it's these are really good teams playing, re- regardless of, of what the rankings may be. As you can see, teams are starting to pick up the pace of play here late. And all these teams know each other. So this is, you know, an instance where uh, you might want to wait in game and you might be able to get a better line at a discount and get better odds. And that's all we can really ask for as sports bettors, right? No, and, and and Wes mentioned it with that three, you know, third time's a charm. These are conference teams. They played each other twice. So they're going yep. back. And some of them played each other twice really recently. So yep. uh, the, the one thing I do want to mention is I always look at the game ahead of time. It, if I can, and I have a a, 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 a a speed reading, a speed reading thing I do with the data that allows me to see if there's anything jumping out at me before I'll, I'll dig it in. But we had a, quite a few teams this morning that you guys mentioned, and I, you know, I crossed the line right through it. I mean, and I literally, here's the pen. I go whoop, right through the team, right through the game. I want nothing to do with it. But that's before the game. Once the game starts, uh, you know, what's a totally different relationship I have? I'll, you know, I'm not going to – I just cross it off so I know that I can move on to the next one because, look, there was like – it was like a full day of college football today. There was – there's 70 or 80 games today. It was just crazy. All right. One – I'm going to throw one name at you, Penn State. They won me a lot of money. Was it – was that just yesterday? Does it seem like it was 14 days ago? That's how much basketball I have watched and wagered on in the last two days that Penn State's comeback win. That was yesterday, right? Golly, gee, it seems like I, an eternity. I, I don't know if it was yesterday. or I know they had a, a, a recent game against Maryland, too, that they I, I think they pulled off the upset against Maryland, if, if I'm not mistaken. It's like you said, It's there's so many games I get confused, especially when you bet every day. It's... It's yeah, hard to they, it's hard they, to keep track of, of what of what happened it was yesterday. Against Nebraska, remember they were down fourteen. They were down, yeah, yeah. But I bet go. I bet on them. I bet their team total over. I bet them the second half, and I bet them uh, to win the game outright at, at halftime on the money line. They they outscored Nebraska forty nine to twenty nine. Cashed every single ticket, and again, um, I, I laugh about it. So let's let's finish up with Sloppy's final uh, video. What happens is when you wake up Friday morning, you either did right on Thursday or when you go to bed Thursday night, whatever the case may be, or you did wrong. How do you react? How do you handle those various situations in betting golf? Obviously, you you can't when golf starts, you can't bet the top 10s, the top 20s, the top fives after the tournament has started. So it's very hard to hedge your bet on those top 10s. You just got to really let them ride out. But I will take some shots at some winners. If I see some guys at the top of the leaderboard that I like, then I'm getting some okay odds on. Now, if I see some of these guys, like say Cantlay is in the top 10 already and he's shooting a good round, I may even pick him a little bit more. I might jump on it more and bet him to win even more, even though because I got a little bit of a hedge with his top 10, top 20. So yes, I will look at some of these guys, see how they've been playing, see if they're still in it, and maybe even take those guys to win to hedge my top 20 a little bit more. Uh, so you wake up and the guy is right in contention, which means that he's going to have to go backwards for you to lose a top 10 bet. So yeah. with, with that, what you're saying is you'll, you'll sprinkle some more money on top of him. 
Absolutely. And, and also you can also say you come down to it and there's some other guys sprinkled up the top as well. Maybe pop a couple winners on those guys. So you have a few guys in that top 10. Now, if you don't have all these four that you've bet so far. And what about a guy, like you said, who is 11 behind, he shoots plus three, you got him in the top 10 and the guy is minus eight. Absolutely. When I wake up in the morning, Cantley's already going to be playing probably for three, four hours. So I'll have a good idea when I wake up, if I'm, if he's dead to me or if I'm going to ride him out and watch it all weekend. But there there's a lot of, when you bet guys, they're dead to me after day one. <laughs> no, it, it happens. It happens. So when you look at your printout, if you're betting online, by the end of the golf tournament Sunday night, how many wagers could you have placed? I mean, it get, with golf, it comes down to a lot. I mean, I, you'll probably see me have 10, 11 bets by the end of the weekend. And that'll be just some small little $25, $50 wagers on some winners. And hopefully some of these top 10, 20s hedge out. So, Well, yeah, I, you know, remember who you're talking to. The three of us had the seven plays on the Bruins game when they played in Tahoe. <laughs> in one game, we, we catch seven times. So 11 <laughs> sounds sounds like you're lying to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, some people would look at Sloppy and say, 11 bets on a golf tournament? You're a degenerate. But uh, I I'm, I would not be on the list of people that would do that, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so uh, let's talk about this weekend. Uh, remember, th the concept is this. We spend all day doing this stuff, all day long. And then what we do is we communicate back and forth. And if you want to be involved in that communication loop, you go to sportsbettingweekly.com and you look at the cash tickets page. Uh, we've got a bit.ly link. It's bit.ly slash. I think, it, yeah, it's on the bottom of the screen. Cash tickets here. Because it really is all about cash and tickets. And, and we talk about that. What you got to do is you just keep cashing tickets. You keep cashing tickets. And sooner or later, there's no games left, and you got tickets to cash, or the money's in your account. So, what about this weekend, John, for GMF Sports Consultants? What are you gonna? What are you thinking now? This is the last weekend you're going to be in America for a while, right? Yeah, that that is correct. I'll actually be leaving to Costa Rica on Wednesday, so uh, this will be the oh, last hit, weekend. Yeah. If I hit me, could you swing by my book in Costa Rica? Pick up yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, sure, sounds good. I'll I'll, I'll pick some up for you. <laughs> actually, I, I'll, I'll try to I smuggle have, it back over. Right? <laughs> I got I got. Actually, going to two different places, so I don't know how if they're across town or if they're right next. Yeah, to you. well, chances are, if you if anybody's out there dealing with an offshore book, I think ninety nine percent of them are in Costa Rica. So this this is going to be the one good thing where I won't miss a beat as far as betting wise. Um, you know, maybe my Wi Fi signal might be a little spotty at best, but uh, otherwise, other than that, I'll be watching the games down there on Friday and uh, Saturday. You know, beachside, so can't go wrong with that. No, no. but. Wait, what uh, about about this weekend uh, but yeah yeah then this weekend college basketball it's going to be mainly college basketball uh so many games on the board you want to try to focus on one sport um i'll take a peek at nba uh but they're coming off the break so i tend to kind of stay away from them when they're coming off the break it might take guys a couple of days to kind of get back into the routine you know who knows what the nba guys were doing uh when they have those games off uh, my peak at NHL, but I, I would say probably 75% of my focus is going to be on college basketball this weekend. Uh, Blackhawk West, we did not mention the Rebel Stakes at all, but that's a $1 million race that I know I will have action on that day, and we will talk about that. That will be part of the loop. Again, I'm not disrespecting exactas. I don't want exactas out there to think I don't like them. I want them to continue to come to me. I would just like that horse underneath to be the one of the numbers in my hand on my ticket. What do you got going West this weekend? So this weekend is actually both Saturday and Sunday, big FCS. Uh, there's another dog that I, that I like this, this, uh, this weekend. And I think this dog also has a chance to win outright. It, it is a double digit dog again. Um, there's also some hockey games where I, where I, I like, uh, I like some dogs too. This weekend coming up is going to be big in both, uh, both hockey and and football. You know, you mentioned the the eleven bets. Uh, you know, last night we had the Oilers and we we had we we won five times. And you referenced the Bruins game and, and that Oilers game. Uh, that was the second time this week we did that on a hockey game. Not to mention the one we gave away last week. So I've been I've been sending out live plays uh, to to the members on on my Chicago Options Trader Discord page. Uh, you know, again, they're going into a game with with predetermined action unless it's a dog. 
it's just not as opportunistic. So I've been sending out a lot of live plays there. So if you join us this weekend, you're you're going to get that. You're going to get paid on Monday. That that's that's a guarantee. Yeah, and I, I just uh, if you look at the bottom banner, which I think is uh, this one right here. All right. Let's see here. Show. Yeah. So there's GMF Sports Consultants, Wes 151 Sports, Sports Betting Weekly Live.com. You're always going to catch our last show. Remember the worldwide sports radio network. It literally is between us and the DCs, and we're going to be doing another show for the for the uh, March Madness. It really is an app that's worth its weight in Bitcoin. I am second half Chaz, as always. Always be cashing. Yes, sir. Let's cash those tickets. Thank you, guys.